Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. I recently had a request to do a video on IHOP and Mike Bickle. Now I thought everyone knew about them, but apparently not. So today we're gonna cover some of the disturbing information about this organization and why they should be avoided. Now, most of us are familiar with IHOP, but that's not the one we're talking about. This IHOP stands for the International House of Prayer and was started by Mike Bickle on September 19, 1999. It's an offshoot of the heretical Latter Rain movement that started in 1948. Preceding IHOP was the Kansas City Prophets, or False Prophets as some would say, and that pretty much turned into IHOP. The Kansas City Prophets referred to themselves as a new breed of elect seed that was going to be an elite generation of 300,000 chosen people in the end times, a sort of Joel's army that would subdue and rule the earth, which we know as Dominionism and the Seven Mountain Mandate. They believe that God is raising last-day apostles that are going to be even more powerful than the original apostles. One thing IHOP is known for is non-stop prayer, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Now, while that sounds good on the surface, we have to question what kind of prayer they are doing and why they're doing it. With Dominionism, they believe that Jesus can't come back until they make the earth ready and that by 24-hour prayer, it will speed up this process. That's at least one of the reasons. IHOP encourages what is called contemplative prayer, which is choosing a short Bible story, closing your eyes and imagining yourself as one of the characters, and experiencing the story with all five senses. This is much more of a New Age spiritual meditation than a Christian prayer. Another way is using a Bible verse to tap into a spiritual realm and then meditating to find the Holy Spirit. This, they say, will bring you to a place that you can now ask God to show you visions and prophecies. Now, none of this is actually prayer. It actually refers to what is known as Montanism, which in short was people making extra biblical prophecies they said were not given to the original apostles, which is also a big part of what we see happening in the New Apostolic Reformation today. The second thing I want to show is a short clip of their so-called manifestations of the Holy Spirit. This should be enough in itself to know that the Holy Spirit is not operating here. Did he walk on water? <laughs> Praise the Lord. A majority of things. <laughs> I went on a three month spiritual journey. I left Jacksonville, Florida. <clears throat> I was hanging with a prominent motorcycle gang and they put a patch on me. <clears throat> and I left because I'm one, right? I got out of prison in 2007 and I met that man that I was with. And I left after 21 months because I'm one, right? So I came to Kansas just to stay with somebody I knew and the father knew what he was doing because I wound up here. I got delivered. I got signed, sealed, and delivered. Is that I've been delivered from a sight I had since I was five years old. Five years old. And it's a demonic sight. And there's many people out there that have it. And I promise you it is not a gift from the Father if it scares you. And that there is victory in his love. And that if it... He but no manifesting and all that kind of stuff. And the healing is left for after the service when you come but it's changed now. Oh. So I, the Lord began touching you here and then you went home Yeah. at Christmas. Yeah. And what happened when you went oh, home? My pastor told me, he asked me if I could speak at my church for three of our services. The Holy Spirit is God and he takes his glasses off and he looks up and he's like, I feel like I just woke up. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hand 
on my stomach. And I felt like someone punched me in the stomach as hard as they could. And they, <laughs> and they started proclaiming the beauty of Jesus over me. That I am a beloved one. I am his daughter. I am his favorite. I have dove's eyes. I am fair. And they released the joy of the Lord came. The joy of the Lord. And I've been laughing ever since. So she come and shared that at our student chapel. Yeah. And you released a prayer. You, you, were, yeah. you felt that the Lord was moving on others as well yeah. in that same way. Yeah. What were you feeling when you shared that at the student chapel? Oh. I have a friend who used to work in a psychiatric ward, and she said this was the type of stuff she saw there. And this is the same false spirit we see in Bethel and many other movements manifesting an out-of-control spirit. We know that one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is self-control, not out-of-control like we see here. The third thing I want to point out is the hypocrisy of what he says. On his own YouTube channel, Mike Bickle was asked about prophecy and if it was above the Word of God. And he does give a great answer. Well, anything that's not in the written Word of God, I would reject. And so when somebody comes to me and they claim a vision, a dream, an angelic experience, a heavenly revelation, and if it's not in the written Word of God, I will not accept it. And our leadership team will not accept it. Now that's the answer any good pastor would give. Give, but we're going to see that he doesn't really practice what he preaches. And to the naive in his church that hear words like that but don't compare it to his other words, they become confused and deceived. Listen to this next audio clip. A lot of the critics would, would say there's a bunch of platform ministries that speak out prophecies in this nation and that yet those things don't come to pass. I think you, you got to clean it up when you blow it. And, and we've tried to do that over the years. We've had some different things that have said over 30 years, and we've put out statements and said, this was wrong. And you know what? We're not quitting. But the guy said it was wrong. It's not a big deal as long as we own it. Now, we don't want to be frivolous about it, saying it's not a big deal. But, I mean, it's not a game breaker. You're not out of the ministry. I think that you're in trouble if you won't ever admit it, though. I think that's bad. So he's saying that it's no big deal to stand in front of a congregation and say, thus saith the Lord about something and have it not come true. Well, that's not what the Bible says. And as we heard him just say, that if it's not written in the word of God, he would reject it. And false prophecy is not allowed in the Bible. God takes that pretty serious. In Deuteronomy 18.20, it says they should be put to death. But we're going to hear that he takes this a step further, saying that most prophecy is fake and it's okay to be mixed with real prophecy. The real's worth it. I will allow the fake. I don't want the fake on the platform because I, I, I don't want to promote the fake, but I'll allow the fake in the room because I so believe in the genuine. I've had people say that over the years. You know, they said, you know, you know I've had students, you know, some of this seems fake. I go, it is. They go, what? I go, most of it's fake. But what do you mean? I said, I've been watching this 40 years. Most places that I've been, the majority of the manifestations are not caused by the Holy Spirit. They go, really? But I said, but the problem is, it's not all fake. And the genuine is in our midst. And I will allow a whole lot of hamburger helper to allow the genuine take place. I said, I won't promote it, but I will allow it. Because the genuine is so important to the kingdom of God. But that always throws off people if they're young and new at this. They go, it is fake. I go, yeah. I go, just, you know, don't be so open-minded. Your brains fall out. You can understand that the real and the genuine and the fake all exist together in one setting. And it's that way everywhere. There's nothing unique here. It's not any different here than anywhere. It's that way everywhere. So there you have it. Not just in IHOP, but in all churches. This makes no sense. God is not going to allow a mess of fake prophecy and then just throw in a real one here and there. Once again, this is man-made doctrine to help promote their false gospel. But wait, that's not all. He continues here talking more about fake manifestations. For one of five different reasons... They're manifesting, they're laughing, shaking, whoa screaming. And I don't really, I never, I've done them all, I haven't really done the whoa, because I don't really think that's a manifestation, that's just kind of fun. 
I mean, I've done the whoa a few times, but not by the Holy Spirit because it was fun. You know, like, whoa, we high five each other. and So I don't put the whoa under a manifestation category. I put that under high fiving and jiving around category. That's fun. It is fun. I just, I want to cry. I need to touch God bad. I said, won't you tell the woe er to stop woeing? They go, can I? Of course you can. You say, I love that you're woeing, but could you woe later? I'm really hurting. <laughs> Some people go, no, I'd quit your spirit. I go, it's not the Holy Spirit. It's fun. That's all it is. It's just fun. They don't mind not having fun for a minute if you're hurting. You can't be hurting every single meeting. I mean, so he's saying that these manifestations are not the Holy Spirit. It's just fun. I just want to say that's ridiculous. He's right. It's not the Holy Spirit. But it's not just a thing we see people doing for fun either. It's a different spirit. We see this in people like Patricia King and Heidi Baker all the time. I ask for the breaker anointing all the time when I'm believing for things for our ministry because God's always giving us new vision. I thought, if you don't give the breaker anointing, how will we ever break into it? We need so much increase to make that happen. So the breaker anoint, whoa, 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 ho, ho, ooh. I don't often get visited like this during a film shoot. <laughs> But I'm getting visited right now by the breaker anointing. And the Lord just, whoa, told me that even though he himself is the breaker, whoa, he's assigning a breaker angel to our ministry right now. Oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, wow. I can feel its presence and its power right now. And um, I'm not going to stop the camera just because this is happening because it's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, wow, whoa, whoa. Okay, to break over the limits, to bring increase. I think this is a sign from God that as a ministry, we're going to break into new territory. But I impart it to you who are watching right now too. Whoa, that you break open through into new territory, increase and abundance and multiplication over you right now. In the name of Jesus, I ask for the dispatching of this breaker angel that's just come into this, this uh, filming right now, that that breaker angel and the company of breaker angels get released to you in Jesus' name. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> woo. It also means to use violence and to burst open, to spread and to distribute. Does that sound like the gospel? Spreading the good news, distributing. Whoa, the good news of his power. So I'm still in this visitation. It's awesome. They are being controlled by something, but this is not a fun thing. But it gets even worse. He tells us what percentage of these are real in his opinion. He said, in the last 20 years, I have concluded in manifestation meetings all over the world. Again, I've been to several thousand of them, a couple thousand at least. That 80% of them are not real, but 20% of them are. Some people go, what? You're one there, but when you've done it 10 meetings in a row, you're on the auto manifest club, whether you've joined it or not on purpose. But I want the Holy Spirit to touch people and throw people across the room and do bizarre things. But if it does it 10 times in a row, they're in the club. They really are. Someone says, how do you know? I don't know everything. And I don't care. As long as we don't promote the fake, I don't care if the fake happens. And as long as it doesn't distract people from Jesus. Value four, we want liberty. I will bear reproach and the embarrassment to the religious world of anything that's bizarre as long as the Holy Spirit believes he did it. I don't want bizarre that the Holy Spirit didn't do. But if it's the Holy Spirit, I will defend it till the end. I don't so many problems with this. First, he wants the Holy Spirit to throw people across the room? I've never seen that in the Bible. And second, he flat out says that he doesn't care about the fake. Guess what? God does. And if Bickle is so arrogant to think that he can pick out real prophecy from the fake, he is truly deceived. And he says, as long as it doesn't distract people from Jesus, well, of course it's gonna because it's 80% false. 
So he wants these people to build their foundation on an 80% false prophetic word. He is a true deceiver through and through. And seriously, what the heck does as long as the Holy Spirit believes he did it even mean? It's utter nonsense. Now, the last clip here is something from a video he put together to respond to some of his critics. Our reformed brothers out there would look at Kansas City and they would say, this is kind of modern day Gnosticism. They hold secret revelation higher than the word of God. What would your response be to those guys? And I believe that a whole lot of the dreams and visions aren't even real. I mean, even though the people are genuine lovers of God, and even though they might have a history of having some dreams and they actually came to pass the things they saw, I have I know many people that have had you know seen some things in dreams and then had hundreds of dreams. I don't know the number, of course, multitudes of dreams that were not prophetic at all. They were just pizza. <laughs> And they were not helpful. They were actually, and, but because they had two or three or four or five or 10 dreams where there were helpful information that ended up being valid and from God, that doesn't mean the next hundred are right. You know, you know, there, there's a verse in Ecclesiastes chapter seven, I think it's chapter seven that says, or, or chapter five, that with many dreams, there's emptiness and vanity. I don't mean the people aren't real. Some of them are faking it. And there's a lot of people faking it. But even good people just have dumb stuff. It's just dumb. And I'd say probably 80% of what I hear, I throw it away. Doesn't move me at all. Doesn't bear witness to me. I still like the guy. I believe in his walk with God, but I don't believe what he says is from God. You know, the dream. So now he's added dreams and visions also being 80% fake as well. And it's just pizza, whatever that means. But he's okay with this false prophecy, false manifestations, false dreams and visions, and who knows what else. The third reason IHOP and Bickle should be avoided is that he is indeed a false prophet that stood beside God in heaven and has many outlandish stories, which Carm has so nicely recorded with all the original references as well. In one here, he describes a visitation to the throne room of God, and he is told that God will be restoring the apostles to the last church. In another, he said he was at the Lord's left hand, and it was not a dream. This was as real as life here. And the list goes on. Once again, I'll leave a link to this as well as Stephen Kozar's messed up church page that has about 20 other links of reports on all these other things that you can check out. But in summary, this organization should be avoided because number one, contemplative prayer is mystical, not biblical. Number two, dominionism is not what the Bible teaches. Number three, their so-called manifestations are much closer to the Kundalini spirit or something else, but it's definitely not the Holy Spirit. Number four, their understanding and teaching of prophecy do not line up with what the Bible says. Number five, in a nutshell, they are teaching and practicing all the same things as Bethel. There is nothing to be gained from Mike Bickle or IHOP. So read your Bible and stick to a good old-fashioned church that puts the focus on Christ and sharing the gospel instead of on gifts, experiences, and manifestations. Well, that's it for today. Remember that if you did find this information helpful, like and share this video, and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to get all future notifications. But until next time, take care and God bless.